Yes, uh, good evening in Trento or good day wherever you are. Otherwise, <laughs> I regret not being in Trento actually with you, a lovely place. Um, but um, yes, yeah, I um, thank you for the um, invitation to present uh, the statistical organization model for heavy quarks. I'll do a a uh, very brief introduction, and then it will be the um, the talk will be dedicated to mostly charm quarks, and uh, towards the end, a few words on beauty. You see here the co-authors and the papers on which uh, this is uh, based. Um, yeah, I think I don't really need to introduce the statistical model or the thermal model. Here is the grand canonical partition function. This is the standard way to perform calculations. And then there is the, the canonical part is done via corrections, which is essentially ratios of Bessel functions. So as you know, the, uh, by imposing uh, conservation laws, namely charm and strangeness neutrality and isospin and uh, baryon number of the system sort of tuned to mu b, which is the amount, the degree of stopping of the two colliding nuclei, one is left with um, two fitting parameters in case one fits ratios, namely temperature and mu b, or three if one does yields, and this is the third is the volumes. And this is the standard, well, by now, mostly done scenario. Here is the result of the fit in the UDS sector um, at the LHC. And the uh, resulting temperature is uh, 156 around, or 157, with a um, statistical uncertainty of about 2 MeV and maybe something systematic at the level of a few MeV as well. And uh, what you see is that uh, the, at the LHC, matter and antimatter is produced in equal amounts. This you all know that leads to a mu B value very close to zero. And the precision of this closeness to zero is at the level of four MeV. That's what we deduce from the data at uh, 2.76 uh, TeV. The uh, formerly known proton puzzle is also solved via the S matrix treatment of the interaction, but I will not go into any detail here. And as uh, Alex Calvite had just discussed, also loosely bound objects are described very well. That's leads us to think of hadronization as bags of quarks and uh, gluons. And the relevance of this fit is um, in the phenomenological QCD phase diagram, as you know, in the T mu B plane um, is sort of the hadronic observable delineate, uh, the fits of the hadronic yields uh, delineate Presumably a, a border between core gluon matter and hadronic matter. Certainly for low mu B, this seems to be the case by comparing what to what lattice QCD tells us. What happens at high mu B is of course an, still an open question, but this is also not uh, part of the, uh, not a major uh, point of interest for this workshop. So I leave it uh, um, at this. What you see here is actually several model incarnations. They are doing, I mean, all these codes are doing essentially the same with small variations. And what one deduces from here that the model or code uncertainty is in fact quite small. Now I switch already now with this plot that you have already seen in the presentation by Alex in one form of it um, to the charm sector. So uh, compared to what I've just discussed in the UDS sector, the charm part uh, is produced differently, is non-thermal. So the PQCD or perturbative production at an earlier stage is to be considered. And physically, one thinks of throwing in a handful of CC bar pairs. And that handful is about 10 at the LHC at 2.76 TeV, this case that I'm considering here. And that leads um, to a uh, fugacity compared to the grand canonical calculation of about 30 while the, actually the canonical suppression factor is actually very small. Uh, it's already, you see that charm, yeah, this ratio of uh, the Bessel functions I1 to I0 of a value very close to unity. You see that for central collisions at the LHC, charm is, um, uh, the canonical penalty is essentially vanishing. 
Now, what is assumed here, when you look at this plot um, of uh, yields per spin degree of freedom versus mass, you have seen all the species that Alex had discussed before. And you see, in addition, the JSI here. And uh, what you see is exactly the square of this um, fugacity, namely 30 power of two, essentially three orders of magnitude larger than a pure thermal prediction, right? As expected and well fitting the data. What is assumed here is that uh, the CNC bar quarks that we have thrown in the system in the expanding and cooling fireball that we all know and love, uh, do fully thermalize in this system. And uh, that is, they have a, a mobility within a volume of the order of 4,000 Fermi cube at chemical freeze out, which is the chemical freeze out together with the UDS um, quarks at 156 MeV. And another assumption is that there is full color screening in the Matsui results picture, namely that there is no survival of a JSI meson until the phase boundary, the hadronization temperature, the chemical freeze out temperature, 156 MeV. Now the model predicts more than the JSI, and this is what I will be discussing here, but it is interesting to note that uh, at, in this case that I'm presenting here, the pions and kaons from uh, charm decays are already not negligible. Actually, if one looks at the kaons, this at about 3%, which is comparable to the measurement uncertainty, in fact, a little bit smaller. But uh, already these are things that um, one needs to consider, although again, they may not be crucial. So, what and how one calculates is explained here. So the thermal model calculation is done in the grand canonical uh, ensemble. The T and mu B are constrained, are known already from the UDS sector. And uh, the uh, essential part is the second bullet here, the uh, um, balance equation relating this number of CC bar pairs that I have thrown in the system to what I calculate. And this is done via the, uh, the uh, parameter here is the charm fugacity. And this is extracted from the equation and then used further to do the calculations. But the new input parameter, new and only one extra parameter compared to UDS sector is the amount of CC bar pairs thrown in the system. So um, yes, this is how the equation looks with the canonical uh, penalty factor here explicitly in the lower part. And this is actually important for less central collisions. So the centrality dependence is also at the LHC, not only at lower energies, but also at the LHC determined by the centrality dependence of this canonical penalty factor I1 over I0 and the GC value then extracted from this equation. And then the calculations are very simple. For open charm, we have a GC factor times the total yield in the thermal uh, calculation. For JSI, you have GC square. For Psi CC, you will have also a GC square as Alex already had explained. Uh, explained. So T and mu B and the volume as well is fixed from the UDS sector and NCC bar uh, there, direct, directly produced CC bar pairs are taken from experiment or PQ, with PQCD guidance sometimes. We do have an assumption of a minimal volume of QGP of 200 Fermi cube, and that uh, sort of regulates in some rather primitive way how the model evo uh, evolves towards peripheral collisions, so very low number of n particles. So um, long ago, um, you see here in this uh, plot, the expectation we had based on the comparison to, to the model at RIC, where the suppression pattern on the nuclear modification pattern, uh, uh, factor was seen, the expectation for the LHC was that clearly the factor will be larger. This was for the full energy RIC, uh, LHC, and what came to be realized um, in the data is a bit different, but qualitatively exactly the ex expectation. And so this has to do from the simple fact that from RIC to the LHC, the CC bar cross-section increases by a factor of 10 about, while the volume increases by a factor of two to three. So this was known at that time before the LHC uh, started uh, uh, operating such that this prediction was rather confident, um, in, at least within this model, right? 
And uh, it was uh, nicely realized, as you see here, uh, with from a rather I mean, earlier comparison, uh, dating from already four years ago, can be updated. The upper panel, there are data for 5 TV. I haven't managed to do this yet, but uh, yes, we have also calculations here for 5 TV. Now, what you see here is that the model, of course, has quite a sizable uncertainty from the input NCC bar uh, value, which is deduced from the C if equivalent lead lead uh, CC bar cross section. So the values quoted here are the ones after shadowing. Shadowing is actually um, known with a precision of about uh, 15 to 18 percent. The sigma CC bar in PP is known with a precision of about 10% by now. So um, yes, this is uh, what comes out here. And actually these values one may think are a bit lowish, at least if we um, uh, look at what is being measured currently by uh, Alice. But um, yeah, I will uh, make a few more comments about this uh, a bit later. So. Uh, if this will be end of the story, then one would say JSI is another observable for the uh, phase boundary with, I mean, an observable, which is actually with quite some weight because the charm quark itself is weighty, it's heavy. So it is uh, probing a temperature with another mass scale, which is certainly not thermal, which is a very nice uh, thing, I believe. Now, of course, this is not the end of the story, but meanwhile, um, let me discuss um, the full charm predictions for the LHC that you have also seen in the presentation by uh, Alex. You see here the full zoo, including the charm neutron and charm triton that Alex addressed, but also other exotic states like uh, pentaquark uh, here of a mass of 4.3 discovered by the LHCB, the uh, triple charm uh, omega, um, or the um, famous X3872, Chi C3872 in the current denomination. Now um, we have predictions uh, which are much more than this figure and I will address only some of them, but this illustrates sort of the power of the model of predicting many species as soon as their mass and quantum numbers are known. That's all it takes essentially, it's a very simple model. In a few more details, you see in the left side here, um, the, our version of uh, the uh, plot that Alex was showing was the black line, uh, the uh, non-charm sector, the blue single charm, the green line, the double charm and the magenta, the triple charm, where in the triple charm family, we only know of a triple charm omega um, variant. Now, what you see here is that uh, the, the points that we calculate do depart from the naive expectation of a line here, which is essentially the primordial production, so pure thermal production. And these departures, which are large, depending on and particle dependent, are the result of um, strong decays from excited resonances, as also in the UDS sector, obviously. And um, the exact values here depend on the hadron spectrum and um, we use what is in the PDG and we have quite a number actually of them. I noticed that uh, certainly we have uh, many more uh, charm mesons and baryons than what uh, Min He had listed as PDG. So that, that may be an earlier version. And we actually include um, also possible states. So states that are not truly um, um, confirmed, so to say, and do make guesses on the, on the case. This, the numbers I'm listing here are particles and antiparticles. You see here the factor of full to thermal. So namely the departure of these points in the left plot from the respective lines. And you see that for lambda C, this factor is about five. For D0, it's a bit more than four. And for DS, it's uh, 2.6 and so on. And this factor is of course, momentum dependence. And what is calculated here is um, uh, based on the fast reso uh, package. Here is the system dependence. The uh, canonical suppression is actually shown in the left part here is uh, very strong for light systems. We go from oxygen to argon, to krypton, to xenon, to lead collisions. 
symmetric collisions all the time. And uh, you see that uh, for light systems, the canonical suppression in particular for multi-charm hadrons, but also for single charm, central collisions are being discussed here all the time. Um, so canonical suppression is strong and that leads to even light non-monotonic dependence of GC um, from light to uh, heavy uh, systems. Right, and here are the predictions in terms of yields. I'm showing here mid rapidity in the left side and uh, forward rapidity 2.5 to 4 in the uh, right side of the slide. Uh, this uh, 2.5 to 4 matches the Alice coverage, but it's also a good guess for LHCB, at least. Yeah, it's a good departure point um, uh, for the LHCB coverage. So you see here, just uh, by means of illustration, the yields of the expected yields for, for central collision in 0.10% for lambda C, psi CC, and omega triple C, as well as for comparison, the psi 2S um, in the Charmonium state. So this will be all challenging to be measured in uh, run three, but um, a good part of it will come maybe up to the Omega CCC. That will, I think, remain very challenging in round three and four. Right, we can do the momentum, the transverse momentum dependence by assuming full hydrodynamical flow up, so um, collectivity up to 156 MeV. So we use inputs from um, hydro calculations with music, with IP glass mass input um, uh, initial conditions. And we then parameterize based on the beta dependence with the uh, radius of the fireball shown in the left side here. We parameterize our spectrum uh, using Bessel functions and the full expression is given here. Well, of course, we have to make assumption of the freeze out surface. We have looked at three scenarios in the right side, right uh, plot you see them here. There is some dependence, but actually the dependence on the freeze out scenario is rather small. So up until now, we would have practically no chance to constrain this uh, from the data. So the band you see in the right plot here is the uncertainty from the charm cross section, which is for the moment still by far dominating, right? Good, this is the um, um, case of uh, D0 and the lambda C in the upper and the lower panel. In the left side, the spectrum, the absolute spectrum in PT, and the right side, the nuclear modification factor. You see that we extend our uh, comparison to high momenta. Of course, the model itself has nothing to say about momenta larger than two to three times the mass where the uh, thermal spectrum dies out as you see very clearly here in the um, uh, left side of those plots where beyond four, five GeV, there is another component which we put by hand is the uh, so-called corona, let's call it nuclear corona in these bad times. And um, the, um, uh, this contribution which we extract from PP is just added in. So that will be the case of sort of full opacity of the medium to the charm corks, which of course, obviously not realized in, in reality, right? Right, so um, this is the um, uh, PT dependence. Uh, we show here the ratios to D0 for D plus in the uh, uh, upper left plot, for D star plus in the upper right plot, for DS in the lower left plot, and for lambda C to D uh, in the lower right plot. And you see that the ratios are quite well described by the, uh, by the model and the uh, increasing uncertainty band is essentially, is all due from uh, determined by the knowledge of the spectrum in PP, the data. Smoothened out or, yeah, exactly, smoothened out. Well, we will see whether the, uh, I mean, apparently the lambda C to D is larger than what we predict. And um, um, I would like to discuss a case here, namely similar to what uh, Min He has uh, shown we could actually modify the hadron, the charm hadron spectrum for our calculations. And what we did here is an ad hoc modification. So no sophistication of the type that Minhe had presented. So we simply tripled the excited charm baryon states by hand. It's a scenario, right? And if we do that and uh, enhance the sigma CC bar by 19%, so 
20%, about the calculations come out to be for the lambda C and psi C hyperons um, about a factor two larger, while all the other states essentially stay where they are. So this, is, this illustrates that if there is extra charm in the system, so our increase of the cross section coming from the baryon sector, namely the, this tripled excited charm baryon states, one would be able to boost the production of lambda C and psi C. And this is simply the contribution from the decay of more excited states than PDG would tell, right? And this is essentially the same picture that uh, Minhe was, uh, was showing, right? But in our case, applied to uh, lead lead, central lead lead. We'll have to see how this could be exploited uh, further, but this is at this moment an um, exercise to illustrate uh, the physics, which is a rather simple thing, right? As expected. Now, if charm thermalizes also at lower energies as indicated, but this may be by chance, by the measurement of the ratio psi to S to J psi at the SPS, this is the red point here. Of course, the model is applicable for lower energies as well, but with the same assumptions. Now, if charm thermalizes less, one will have to put a penalty in the sort of uh, the treatment of the charm. We have not done this, but we certainly had applied um, um, the model to lower energies as well. And of course, also at the LHC, it will be very interesting to see um, the ratio of psi to S to J psi, because you see it is in lead lead, very clearly smaller, significantly smaller to compare to measurements in, uh, in PP. I show here for illustration the application of the model at lower energies. At RIC is the blue line, at LAC the red, at SPS the black line. And what is shown here is actually the yield of J psi normalized to CC bar input uh, cross section. And you see the different regimes here. But I would not like to insist here, rather spend the last minutes on uh, beauty. Now, beauty expe is expected to be less thermalized than compared to charm. The data is still scarce on this, but we have actually quite well, um, um, quite good measurements of uh, V2. ENG, I think, has shown uh, uh, this. And um, another uh, caveat is, in fact, that um, the beauty hadron spectrum is presumably less well known compared to charm. What we have in our code is uh, uh, 48 B mesons, I should correct this here is B mesons, not C mesons, and 46 B baryons in total, so particles and antiparticles. And when we do the calculations, we see that we underpredict the ratio epsilon to S to 1S. This is the measurement by Alice at forward rapidity, and you see the predictions are the blue band, where the uncertainty is determined by the nuclear corona, and the points, the red points, are obviously larger than what we predict. So um, clearly both aspects that uh, the hydron spectrum is maybe incomplete as well as the possibility that the color screening does not destroy all the epsilon mesons in QGP as we assume. This is maybe for 1S rather likely. Um, this uh, leads to what uh, we see here. Now, of course, we then take a deep breath and still do the uh, calculations for the limiting case of full beauty thermalization, at least provide something for interested colleagues doing uh, feasibility studies in detectors. And you see here the zoo of the uh, B family. And uh, you see that um, um, B, lambda B um, hyperons uh, have a yield of about 10 to the minus one in central lead lead collisions and may be well detected also at low PT, I mean, in uh, the upcoming um, beta runs at the LHC. It will be, of course, much more difficult for uh, omega B and even the uh, more exotic mesons like the BC would remain a challenge, but uh, sometimes we hope to see uh, them uh, measured as well. They will tell us a lot about uh, beauty thermalization in a very direct way, of course. This brings me to my uh, conclusion, at least in our approach on the statistical hadronization. The uh, hadronization is a rapid process in which all quark flavors take part concurrently. There are versions of the model when uh, there is a 
where a flavor dependent uh, freeze out is implemented, but not in our model. We treat all flavors democratically. All chalmonium and open charm states are generated exclusively at the hadronization at chemical freeze out. So we assume full color screening. And I've shown you quite some uh, success. So um, um, I see that, and I commented already that um, the charm quartz give a handle for hadronization, the hadronization temperature with a mass scale, which is well above the uh, temperature itself. Of course, there is competition in this, and this will be discussed in this uh, model, um, the, in this uh, workshop, the model by um, Ralph Rapp and collaborators, the kinetic model implements a continuous destruction and regeneration in QGP. And uh, as far as I recall, um, uh, within these calculations, they were showing that up to about two thirds of the JSI yield in central collisions at the LHC originate from deconfined CC quarks, which are assembled at late stage, close to the phase boundary, not necessarily exactly at, but close to. Now, these are not just two um, nice uh, equivalent ways of doing things. These are actually two very different pictures, in fact. And um, I uh, keep saying, actually, this is a repetition of what I was saying in a workshop um, uh, a little bit ago at Trento that discriminating between these two pictures of a sudden hadronization at the phase boundary or of a continuous hadronization in the QGP will give us uh, an answer to a fundamental question related to the fate of hadrons in a hot deconfined medium. And for this, we of course would need a precision measurement of a CC bar cross section in lead lead or gold gold collisions that we'll obtain from the experiments rather soon in a few years from now. Now in the beauty sector, um, um, there is a caveat of um, likely impartial thermalization. Is it at the level of 50%? I dare quoting a number here, but this is a, a belly uh, figure, of course. And there is also the risk or the nice possibility, depending how you look at it, that the Upsilon states may not be fully destroyed by color screening in QGP. So in that sense, our predictions here would need to be taken with a grain of salt. They are upper limits, certainly. And with this, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Andrew. Questions? Uh, Anton, very nice talk, but I have one question there. I mean, if you freeze out finally or create now this composed object like a two-drawn or triton or something like this, which have a large radius finally. Now, if you just count the density of strongly interacting particles at that moment when you finally create uh, in the statistical model the hadrons, is there a sufficient room that they can be built or are there other strongly interacting particles in this radius, which you need in order to get this large object. I'm not sure uh, you know, if I really understood your uh, your question. Of course, the densities I uh, can provide, I have them. Uh, I don't do, of course, any any dynamical treatment, right? So uh, I get numbers from running the code in the sense of uh, just a yes. sudden That's hadronization, right? Exactly. I mean, I, I don't look at any details. I only implement the conservation laws, right? That so is perfectly fine. But if you have this sudden freeze out, then you have a certain density and then yes. you have average distance between strongly interacting particles. Yes. And the question is, is distance smaller or larger as compared to the root mean square radius of this composed object? Uh, the uh, hadron interdistance is smaller than the root mean square of the uh, of, or, of the deuteron or comparable. Yes, this I can tell uh, without even looking at numbers. Yes. Thank you. There is a Ralph Rapp that tries then. Yeah, hi, uh, Andrew. Thanks for the nice talk. Uh, I had a question on your RAA results from the uh, Lambda C which uh, seemed uh, quite low. Is that the uh, uh, previous, uh, uh, the yeah, lambda yeah. RA? So, is that, so the lower right, is that a yeah. consequence of the PP spectrum uh, more or less? Well, yes, the, the PP spectrum is, uh, we have uh, used it uh, as much as it was known uh, about a year ago when we sort almost froze this, uh, these calculations. 
Um, that's a good point. Uh, that's what we get. Um, I, I don't know, actually. No, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to understand. I'm not necessarily trying to make a statement here. I'm just trying to understand. So you use the PP spectrum from Alice, which has a rather large lambda C content, yes. and that yes. is one of the factors which yes. uh, makes absolutely. it low. Is yes. that correct? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay, good. Thanks. Yes. Yes, and uh, well, at this moment, there's, I mean, for these calculations, there is no uh, enhancement scenario. So this is PDG uh, spectrum, and uh, as Minhe has already and uh, shown, and Andrea and others discussed, uh, we clearly see an enhanced uh, lambda. At least the measurements of Alice are clear at uh, at mid rapidity. Those from LHCb less at forward rapidity, but that is something that will be elucidated in. Uh, sometimes in the future. Okay, very good. There is a question. Hello, Anton, it's Enrico. Uh, the question on the on your slide 19 on the um, on the Upsilon uh, matters, uh, uh, let's say, so here, uh, this is a calculation on, on the ratio and you advocate that maybe color screening may not destroy all the Upsilon mesons. Now, for the 2S, which has a, a, a binding energy similar to the J Psi, according to the statistical model, let's say hypothesis, one might really suppose that this is the case. So I was wondering, is there a possibility to have separately, let's say, a, a calculation for the statistical model for the 2S and 1S? Uh, well, one should see that, let's say, uh, yes. the, the place where uh, where one deviates should be all on the, all, or mainly on the 1S. and. Yes, absolutely. We wanted to do this. I mean, we we for a long time actually were contemplating writing uh, a more complete paper on beauty, but uh, sort of delayed it. We're not convinced we have some something to say, or uh, there is something very meaningful to say within the statistical organization model. But as a limiting case, yes, I think we, we should uh, write it down and perform several types of calculations and several scenarios. You see here in this plot that we have the yield of uh, Y2S to S and a centrality dependence will be something very natural to, to attempt, yes. Well, at least for the current uh, BB bar cross section that we have here, which is a realistic one is PP times some reasonable shadowing factor of about 0.8 at this moment, um, we would overestimate Upsilon 1s by about a factor of two to three. So this I have checked. So uh, of course this uh, has uh, can have uh, as explanation the incomplete uh, beauty hadron spectrum on the incomplete normalization, but that's the current situation. I disclose it, yeah. Very good, there is a question from Paul. Hi, I'm Anton. Very nice talk, indeed. Uh, maybe I'm busy the point. I mean, at some point you 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 said that the mechanism that Ralph has about recom dynamical recombination in the kinetic equations is not what is inside your model. Well, it it I, is. Um, I think um, it, it is. A, if you wish, a dynamical, more complete picture of what we have here in a simplified way. But it doesn't need to be that uh, in Ralph's uh, calculations or La Ralph and company, <laughs> I, don't say, I don't want to be exclusive that uh, in those approaches and uh, uh, in particular in Ralph's who is uh, most active in here, um, it doesn't mean that uh, the uh, full thermalization, the way we assume it is reached. In fact, I had been discussing with Ralph and he had agreed, I believe he still agrees that a full thermal limit, a full thermalization, the way we do it in the model would be interesting to explore in the uh, transport approach as well as, as a limiting case. But I believe in the, in the approach by Ralph, there is some leftover unthermalized CC bar quarks. Whether this is 10 to 20%, this is my guess now. Uh, Ralph, of course, would tell uh, more directly. Yes, yeah, the, the, there is on, on the top, but I'm, I'm just speaking uh, about the thing that is equilibrating in, in Ralph approach. So we, we, we agree that you would be some kind of limiting case yes. and it's not different mechanism in principle. Yes. Yes. Okay, thanks. Yes. Anton. This is the sense of this comment here that I made uh, concerning the results of uh, Ralph's calculations where he or uh, he and collaborators had uh, shown that uh, in the central collisions about two thirds of the JSI yield 
a DLAC is uh, uh, originates from late recombination, right? I, I think it's a rough thing, but I, I hope I remember it correctly. Ralph may correct me. Okay, very good. Thank you, Anton. Mm, thank you again. I think there are no other questions.